Hello, hello. Welcome. And we are here uh, back from the Apple event uh, for 2023 Wonderlust. I'm Mackenzie Fay from Tech Republic. And we have some reactions. I mean, just getting through the show, there's a lot to cover here. But I mean, not too many products, but enough to cover because a lot of exciting features for both the Apple Watch series and of course, the new iPhone. And joining me today, again, we're going to wrap back with Emmanuel Jordan and Kyle Hildebrand. Uh, before we jump into products, because why not? That's the whole point. We're here, right? What do you guys think of the show? <laughs> um, Kyle, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I was super impressed with, I mean, like I've always known that the, um, that photography on, uh, on the iPhones has always been like a, like a very big, uh, strong suit, but who man, was I impressed with some of the stuff that they were showing off, uh, in, uh, toward, toward, towards the latter chunk of the presentation. I was very, very impressed with some of the things and integrations with other things, uh, as well. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're kind of like a, uh, augmented reality, uh, vision pro was wild. So yeah, very, very impressed. What about yeah. you, Manuel? Oh yeah, um, yeah. You know what, Apple? I really love the um, the subtle like tweaks and things that they'll fix, um, like the Surrey Plus Health feature, the name drop feature, like precision finding, the double tap. Like, I really like the little subtle features that they added in throughout. You know, the watch and also the phone. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, let's go ahead and jump into. Well, essentially, the first product that they were talking about was the Apple Watch series. So, I mean, like they first off, they started with this like this like very lovely little montage of like all these people whose whose lives have been affected by the Apple Watch and how it saved their lives just because it was able to detect something off in their heartbeat rate, which it was uh, really interesting to see that I don't think we ever have something, you know, so personal. And I didn't know if anyone had thoughts on that. Just, you know, seeing how maybe technology really can affect lives every day. Um, Emmanuel, did you have any thoughts? I mean, no major thoughts, but it was really like heartwarming to see something like that because I never would have thought of, you know, like technology or even like an Apple product in that way. So I thought that was like the coolest little Apple like um, like ad commercial that they've done so far they actually kind of like touched me a little bit yeah well this brings a tear to your eye i mean it yeah. almost did for me i was like uh these people celebrating their birthdays okay. <laughs> uh, kyle what about you any thoughts yeah no i mean it's I don't know. I, I feel like it's something that's overlooked a whole lot just because technology is, you know, it's it's fun. You know, it's fun and there's gadgets and there's things like that. But like, I, I, I think we often forget how integrated it is with some of like the, the major moments of day to of, day -to -day life and whatnot. And so I think this was a really cool way to kind of bring bring attention to that and to make people uh care about the apple watch that a lot of times people you know maybe haven't really given too much too much thought about it you know and so i thought this was a really uh clever way to do that absolutely and i mean to go even further i feel like that was like their main thing was focusing on how they can integrate the apple watch even further into day-to-day -day living right so uh just to start let's go ahead and discuss what they announced we have the apple watch series 9 with a processing chip uh, called the S9 uh, ISP, which the company claims is the fastest one to be introduced since 2020. There's a lot of cool features here, you know, here and there. And of course, it's the next line, the next generation. So what was some of the features that you might have saw or picked up on? Uh, Manuel, I know you mentioned something about the double tap feature, which of course we see very similar to the Vision Pro, which was announced earlier this year at WWDC. Yeah, that's the feature that like really got me. And as I wear my like Google watch, I'm like, maybe I need to switch over. The double tap feature, um, you take your index finger and your thumb and you're able to tap them together and you can end a call, answer a call. Um, you can do scrolling, you can stop timers, a lot of like cool things that like you don't think about when, like if you normally use your watch, there's a lot of times like, you know, you're always tapping it and you never think, oh, maybe, like a lot of these features would be better off if I didn't have to tap my phone or if I didn't have to touch my phone. So it was really interesting that they even thought of adding something like that. Absolutely. And of course, like there's a 
a bunch of other things in there as well, where you have like this double tap feature in Kyle. I want to hear your thoughts on that too. But you also have like longer battery life and carbon neutral uh, emissions. That's their promise. You know, by 2030, all, most of their products are going to be uh, carbon emission free. So any thoughts there? Oh, yeah. I mean, again, like we, we, we talked about how I was stoked about them, uh, you know, avoiding using avoiding using leather in the straps and also how they were going to, um, you know, try and make it even more eco friendly, which is what they talked about during this, which is super cool. Uh, so I, I believe they said that the the, the watch is their, their, their first uh, what is it? Car carbon neutral product uh, so far uh, in the the, uh, the plan is to get them all there. So uh, that I'm very very stoked for that's very cool that uh they're making that a priority just because i mean as far as change goes it has to be these big companies that make the first step and so for them to do that i think is uh is really cool of them to do so yeah absolutely like again like they're always really pushing the boundary and maybe for past tech like with android it, we might have seen it before and we'll talk later about like you know dynamic island coming to the iphone 15 for general audiences, but they do take uh, direction in certain areas that maybe some other companies out there haven't put to the forefront just quite yet, or as much as Apple is doing, especially on the eco front. So really great stuff. Of course, there was like crash detection and advanced cycling tracking and all that, you know, what is to be expected with the uh, Apple Watch series. But to follow up with Series 9, we, of course, also had the Apple Ultra 2, which, uh, again, very interesting stuff. Same uh, processor with the S9 ISCP. Uh, more in, it's more to be enabled with faster uh, re response times and everything like that, and just a heftier price tag. But there's some cool things that they were able to show off with this version. Uh, any favorites that you saw, Emmanuel, with you know this particular version? Yeah, I really like the, um, the Maldra module ultra like the new face for the watch um you can get more info in it and then it also has which i'm not sure if this is a new feature but like the night mode in the dark um yeah i think that was like my favorite uh new feature that they had yeah like i love all the information i always wish i could get more stuff like on the front screen of my watch so i really like that they added in you know a little bit more to this one mm-hmm what about you, Kyle? Uh, does seeing this watch make you like, I think it's time I'm about to get one? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm quite there. I'm not sure if I'm quite there yet, but I am very <laughs> impressed. I mean, that, I mean, there's there's a lot of really neat things about it. The um, uh, what is it? I, I do think it's really cool that they made like such a, uh, you know, they talk about how, uh, how, how, how bright the, the, the head of the actual uh, watch is just because I mean, especially with like smaller gadgets, I feel like that is kind of an issue that a lot of times gets overlooked is that, you know, like there's there's if you're trying to get a lot of information from something, if the screen isn't strong enough, you're not going to be able to easily see it, especially I mean, as I get older, my eyes get worse and worse and worse. Right. And so having like a nice, strong, bright screen on something like this is super useful. So. Absolutely. I'm also kind of on that front. Like, I don't know if this is the, this is going to be it. This is my day to finally get uh, all the Apple devices and get an Apple Watch finally. But it's super impressive to see nonetheless. And of course, you know, we got some updated colors. I know I had a whole rant before the show about the colors. So I'm going to talk about the colors. They have new uh, colors, which included pink, starlight, and silver, which I just love the names of starlight so much. That is very convincing for me to get at least that um, on maybe the Christmas list, but <laughs> to be determined. Uh, all right. Uh, any other thoughts, Emmanuel and Kyle, about the Apple Watch series? No. Um, yeah, the pink, I was looking at it. And I was like, hmm, Mackenzie would love this. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, I like the features that they added on um, the Siri Health um the name drop i wanted to know the name drop feature i know that was something that was recently introduced with the iphone where you can like touch the iphones um mackenzie is that a feature just like on your iphone that you use a lot and that you think is going to be used a lot for the watch you know that's fair and i remember talking about this when uh at wwdc the event earlier this year when they entered when they started talking about that and how you can customize things to easily swipe over to other phones 
I still haven't really used it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, I lied. I'm the self-proclaimed, like, I love to design things and categorize mm -hmm. things. I still haven't really uh, dived in yet, but I am also always impressed when they can expand that technology to the other devices, especially sooner than we expect. It sometimes takes like a whole year for W until WDC when they actually transition, like, you know, uh, when just looking at the iPad this year, a lot of the features from the iPhone from the previous year were just transmitted over to the iPad. So now that we're kind of seeing that with the watch, um, you know, that's very fast turnaround. So I was impressed by that. Okay. Again, to be determined if I like it though. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think we probably had enough of the Apple Watch, uh, if I do say so myself, because I feel like the main event is always the next iPhone. The iPhone 15 has been announced, just as we speculated, of course. And there was a lot of updates, a lot of interesting updates, especially towards um, processing speed, the camera, the charger of colors. I have things to say about the colors, but I'm going to start slow first. Uh, let's talk about camera. Uh, Kyle, what were some of the things that you saw that they were discussing with the new features? Yeah, so um, both, I, I mean, just like the overall quality of, of the cameras, both of the regular 15 and uh, of the Pro were just, uh, I, I, it was wild to me to see how advanced they could get the technology in such a small space, I think is what it, I mean, because, I mean, yeah, obviously, I mean, these are these are things that fit in the palm of our hands, whereas, you know, the things that they're trying to pull off with them are, you know, similar to the things that we would use for, you know, back in the day, we had cameras that were like huge, you know, that uh, both both video and regular cameras that uh, were, uh, were 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 massive. Uh, and, and what they're able to do now with these things is is it's it's hard to imagine, honestly. But it's it's very cool to see how they're doing, uh, like the multiple refractions and whatnot, in order to like increase the distance uh, to be able to do that, like that was wild like what was i think i think four four separate refractions with it uh, in in there in order to kind of like increase and multiply that distance which is so cool so yeah it was like what like five times what uh was before something like that i, yeah. I i'm forgive me if my facts are not 100 percent correct we <laughs> just watched the event there's still a lot of interesting <laughs> info going out there but like okay like i have to show you all something this this lens this is 70 to 200 okay this is the lens they were talking about now i know that for the camera that they're promoting it's 120 right but this is 200 this is very hefty and like think about how thin an iphone is like just i mean i know we're talking like the other advanced models here but how did they do that i i am fascinated by this technology and how they were able to condense this into this basically it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking. It's just like it, it it boggles my mind to think of how how much they're uh, they're advancing on that front. Also, the uh, uh, what is it the, the the spatial spatial computing that they were talking about on on the uh, on the pro how they were using two of the different cameras in order to get kind of like a the, the three dimensional thing that you can push over into the vision. That's Oh man, that's that's wild. Because I mean, like, I think one of the things that always uh, trips people up about, you know, like three D kind of stuff or, or augmented reality kind of things is that it's like it's hard to get into, right? I mean, like, it's not very easy to get a stereoscopic camera, but now it kind of is. I mean, like, obviously the price tag is 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 the biggest hurdle, but I mean, like, it's a lot more accessible now than it used to be, right? And that's really impressive. So, yeah. And uh, for those who are maybe not keeping up with our combo, I'm just going to remind the audience, we are jumping into the uh, Pro and Pro Max models right now just because they are, they are very hefty in terms of what technology they were able to achieve. But I do want to dial it back to the iPhone 15, just regular model here, at, especially because... Um, the dynamic island is again we're bringing it back up the general public can now have access to it it doesn't have to be just the more expensive models and emmanuel i know you had thoughts on that yes i was um very excited for it um and the new features um some of them just like more things you can um interact with the dynamic island you can now track food delivery you can track flights you can track live game results um i'm not a, you know 
sports person, but I'm sure for some, that's going to be really cool. Um, so yeah, I was like really impressed. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that all the models can now have the dynamic island. So even for the lower tier iPhones, um, you know, that's something that they can enjoy also. Absolutely. It just seems so fluid and easy to use. I'm very excited to actually, you know, uh, this is like the one thing I lacked as an iPhone user was that capability that other devices have out there already. But now I get to use it if, you know, when I transition over to uh, iPhone 15, at least <laughs> <laughs> to be determined uh, in the near future or not. But mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of like great tech. And I want to talk about the screen too, because I know we have some techies here. We definitely do. And we especially have game in, uh, enthusiasts in, on this call. Uh, when they were talking about the Super Retina screen and the fact that apparently ray tracing is possible. For those who are unfamiliar with ray tracing, I will give you the simple short of it. That is super hard to accomplish on even built PCs, like really well built PCs. And the fact that they're saying this is all going to be accomplished on a phone, I almost am like, I was like, I have to see it to believe it because I don't know if I believe them. That's that's incredible if that's what they were able to achieve. Like Kyle, you first, like, because I was like, I'm just thinking of my gaming friend here. Like, yeah. <laughs> like how does that work? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh... Like I'll I'll be the first to admit. I mean, like I've I've had like really strong gaming rigs in the past. I currently don't have a very strong one, and so the idea of a phone having this much strength, like built in as far as graphical uh, graphical capabilities, is uh, woo. I mean, that's I mean, it's, it's really cool. I mean, like I like just. Uh, no other way to say it. Like, this is very cool if they're able to, to to really pull that off. Because ray tracing, I mean, it really does, like, it takes, it, 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 it like, multiplies how impressive graphics look, you, you, you know, in, in a game. I mean, like, you slap ray tracing onto something as simple as Minecraft, and it's still just like, wow, look how pretty it is, you know? Like, it's, 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 it's impossible to ignore. So, uh, very, very cool of them to, uh, to, to make this kind of, like, leap and bound into uh you know uh graphical fidelity so yeah no i, I don't know if i will i'm the target audience because i grew up still in that day and age of like appreciating the big screen but i just like the next generation who are growing up with this mobile entertainment are, are gonna just enjoy so much of the like the long car trips or anything like that because they'll get all these advanced games immediately and also have really great uh like imaging for movies and stuff like that like you have like a little mini theater in the palm of your hands and i know emmanuel in particular you're probably you might be excited about to hear that because i know you're the movie enthusiast yes yeah i was really excited for it um i of course i'm not a big gamer so like it did look really cool and i was when that feature did come up i immediately thought about youtube so i was wondering now that they have that feature in there um is this going to entice you guys to play video games um on your phone now? no <laughs> i'm gonna say the same thing <laughs> i don't know again it's me i'm biased i'll hear you. kyle please tell me what you think but I was like, I just prefer a bigger screen. And also, I don't have time to play games on my phone. Like, I don't know, like. Yeah, no, I um the only way that I could imagine that being a thing for me, I mean, like, because I, I have I have a Nintendo Switch, right, which is a which is a mobile game, which it doesn't have to be, but it is a mobile uh, gaming platform. The only time that I use it is when I'm traveling, right? Like for me, like I'm I am a I am a sit at my desk and play you know, kind of gamer. Um, and because of that, like, I just, I play on something that's on my, on my rig, you know, on, on my, on my PC. Um, I'm not on my phone generally to game. It's everything else that I'm on my phone for, but, but not that. Uh, also, I mean, I, I know I'm going to sound very old for saying this, but like, like, like squishing my hands together to 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 press things on on a uh, on a phone to game feels so weird as somebody that is used to a wasd and mouse setup where my arms are like spread all the like as far apart as you possibly can for a gaming apparatus like that's uh it's 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 a lot to ask for my hands to kind of like you know smush together to do that so I will say this, and maybe this again, maybe not Kyle, maybe not me in 
terms of demographic of who they're reaching to. But I will say that this is a really great solution for uh, households that can only afford certain uh, amount of technology. And if the phone is going to be your one choice technology, you can still game, you can still watch movies, you can get your homework done. You know, there's so many possibilities with just one device. And I do really appreciate that uh, versatility with that phone as an option for different types of families out there and different people. All right. Um, okay, so let's, uh, I guess we're talking a lot about the pro at this rate because that again it always has the most advanced features uh compared to just the regular model i'm not this is definitely not a disc towards the regular model but they put so much love into these pro and pro max uh last thing i wanted to talk about especially regarding that is we have titanium now for our phones <laughs> <laughs> these things are supposed to be unbreakable we also have stainless steel uh and which was of course uh introduced with the uh iphone 10 but it's coming again back to this and then of course we also have the a17 chip to make the thing everything just so fast and smooth we already talked a little bit about the gaming but again this is just a powerhouse of a phone if i do say my, so myself um emmanuel did you have any thoughts about that yeah um yeah the titanium uh and i feel like as an android person i always i feel like every person with an iphone has a cracked back or a cracked screen like it's always cracked so i'm really interested to see how you know durable this phone is going to be but yeah a lot of great features um thin borders um it's a lot lighter um and then i did see correct me if i'm wrong they had a white version that i <laughs> I was lied to in my speculations and my research. <laughs> yeah. That's fine, though. We, we have all the colors. Fine. <laughs> it's a safe world again. <laughs> yeah, so I was really excited. Um, to The white really made me excited. But yeah, um, a lot of great things. I was really interested that they um, changed the, uh, the side button, where now it's like, I think it was called the action button. And so now you can do little shortcuts with it um, instead of the other way it used to be. And so, Mackenzie, I was wondering for you, was that a necessary change? Does that change anything for you? I would certainly have to play around with it. Like, it's, again, I and open arms with these new innovations, especially in terms of like accessibility and making things just easier. Um, if you're able to use a one little action button for multiple things, that's a success in my book how it works and how easy it is to actually use in day-to-day -day use to be determined but i am looking forward to it i want to see how it all works again that goes back to like you know the double tap feature with the uh, apple watch like you have to actually see and feel how it works to see how uh, efficient and user friendly it is yeah all right kyle did you have any uh, thoughts about our indestructible phone now nowadays <laughs> I mean, a anything that makes it, uh, I, I don't know, like the phone is such like, it it's wild to me how like integral it is, you know, like to day to day life now to have a functioning smartphone. And so if there's anything that can improve um, the uh, how accessible it is to you, you know, w which means just not breaking, uh, I, I, I think it's fantastic. And so for something like this to exist, especially like uh, like what Emmanuel says, I know so many people with cracked scr uh, screens. So I mean, like this, this is uh, uh, this is a win for sure. Absolutely. We're winning over at Apple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't think uh, before we wrap up, I do want to go over like, of course, like the price tags and the colors. We got to talk about the colors because we have uh, what they announced, black, blue, pink, white and yellow. So, yes, the white was there. I was very excited to see it because I was I was going to I was going to have a lot to ask to Apple if they actually chose to get rid of a white color. They've always had white in their lineup. So, you know, I'm glad they're sticking to their their colors. That's a button, by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and of course, with the different models, we have different prices. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I can't find the immediate one for the uh, basic one. Ah, oh, thank you, camera operator. Uh, we have the standard uh, for iPhone 15. That's uh, $799. And then the uh, 15 Pro is at $999. But the Pro Max is all the way at a whopping uh, $1,199. So basically $1,200 US dollars here. Definitely a price tag. 
how many people are willing to hop onto the Pro Max is to be determined, but I can't say, I will say this, that there's a lot of features to offer. And if someone wants to use that as their primary computer for the rest of their days, that that's a win in their book, honestly. All right. Well, I think that's everything we have to say about the Apple event for Wonderless 2023. Uh, any final thoughts, uh, Kyle, um, from you? Um, I, like I said, I, it's just, it's always really cool and impressive to see the technological advances that they're able to pull off. Uh, and again, very excited about the eco-friendly, uh, you know, like steps that they're taking. So, uh, all, all good and exciting things. It's, it's, uh, I'm going to keep, you know, my ear to the ground and see what's going on with these, uh, these events in the future. So. Absolutely. What about you, Emmanuel? Yeah. Um, yep. I appreciate the, the small little details, um, that they changed, uh, and improved on, you know, the dynamic island with the watch, the tap feature, and even like other things with like their wireless connectivity. Um, I know we didn't get to it, but like the satellite service um, was free for two years, the roadside assistance feature, um, voice isolation, like some of those like smaller things that, you know, most people wouldn't think of or would think they would need, you know, Apple has, you know, in integrated those. So yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm very happy with what, you know, they've done so far. Yeah, the use of one technology is being so versatile, and we love to see that, of course. But yeah, no thoughts for me either. Uh, I always enjoy watching these events. Uh, the spectacle of it alone is worth the watch in every way. So can't wait to see uh, how many pre-orders get submitted for these new phones, I guess. I'm waiting for those stats. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'll wrap it here. Thank you all so much for watching. And again, come back to Tech Republic uh, YouTube channel here to watch other videos. We're going to have more videos talking about other Apple events here in the future. And of course, always go back and watch our old videos for other news content on all things tech related. Uh, thank you, Kyle. And thank you, Emmanuel. And also shout out to our camera operator and producer, Justin Fraction would not be here and not be as cool looking without him. So thank you so much. And thank you audience for joining us. Take care, everyone.